If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum leadership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. I love Anchor because it's really easy to use, very accessible to record your podcast, and has excellent sound quality. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hello, I am Jennifer Lynn Purcell, aka Evertini Butterfly, bringing to you a living with an invisible learning challenge where we will discuss the challenges and triumphs of those with NLD. I don't know if you're a new listener or not, but I would like to share with you where I get most of my articles for this podcast. I've recently learned about a nonprofit that I would really like to help. It's the NVLD Project. In addition to doing research on NVLD, and working to get it back on the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, that is the DSM, they provide support groups for those with NVLD. You can find the NVLD project at www.nvld.org. All proceeds from this podcast and the ads will go towards the NVLD project. I will include the link for this in the description of the podcast. Please go to livingwithnld.com to learn more about my podcast. Also, I would like to announce that I now have created a YouTube channel for this podcast. I will post the link for this in the description for you. Hi, so today we are going to talk about going off to college with NLD. Some of this episode might be triggering if any of you have experienced challenging times in college or sexual abuse. Just a forewarning there. So the article we are going to use is titled Navigating Through the Rough Seas of Transitions. And it is by Amy. And she shares that people with NLD can have challenges with changes and transitions. Quote, transitions come in all shapes and sizes and act as one of the defining threads of this tapestry of life. Although they pose challenges for everyone at some point, individuals with neurological differences may encounter particular difficulty with various types of transitions. Many individuals with an autism spectrum disorder are prone to meltdowns when transitioning from one activity to another, particularly when they, sorry, when the shifting of gears is not predictable, and seamless. Those of us with a nonverbal learning disability, or NLD, may also encounter a, a, sorry, an autopilot shutdown mode in spite of an effort to apply the bricks. Although we may not gain substantial benefit from visual aids, we can enlist verbal strategies to ensure that the navigation into uncharted waters is minimally choppy. End quote. I can relate to what Amy shared because I had a difficult time transitioning from living at home to living on my own in college. I not only missed my parents, my friends, but I also missed my dog, Truffles. I remember often having meltdowns when I was alone in my room or at night when I was trying to fall asleep. If you haven't listened to episode 20 yet, it might be good to listen to that one before or after you listen to the rest of this because it will provide some context for you. Probably better to do it before. The personal things I was going through were still trying to get through the trauma and the aftermath of it. I was sexually abused and molested by my cousin for the better part of six years during my childhood. As if that wasn't enough, basically half of my family doesn't believe my story of it. And I say doesn't because I still think that it's true. And we really haven't talked about it since it happened. It's been the elephant in the family. 
They believe I have some fault to do with it and that we were both equally responsible for what happened. They also minimize what happened to just show and tell rather than sexual abuse or molest. None of this is true, of course. It was completely his fault. I had no idea what he was doing was wrong to me until I was like 10 years old. And that wasn't because anyone or anything told me what sex was. I concluded with my own gut feeling that what he was, what was being done to me wasn't right. And I was more than a thousand percent correct. Like I said, please go to episode 20 for more context, context of this trauma and aftermath of it. I don't really feel like repeating it here. Um, so I decided to do a year of therapy, uh, another year of therapy while I was in college to help me get through my personal things with the trauma. I had already done four years in high school. So this would be my first, my fifth year of therapy. I did psychodrama group. I did a psychodrama group of therapy, which was really different from any kind of therapy I had done. If those, if you are not familiar with it, it's basically when you try to act out your um, emotions and feelings that you uh, have experienced through PTSD and PTSD. Um, and it's actually kind of cool. Um, and it really helped me get that energy and emotions out of my um, mind and body. I remember when I would run from my co-op to the Berkeley Marina and stop at the end of the bridge. I wouldn't look at the view, but many times I would stop there and burst out with tears in my eyes because of how much I was going through. And this would have been in my sophomore year uh, of college because I was in the co-ops and seven in the dorms. I never took my headphones out to hear if someone was asking why I was crying. And I never looked around to see if they were wondering why either. I just cried for probably what seemed like a good three to five minutes, which felt good because it didn't, which felt good, but it didn't do anything to get rid of my loneliness. I even remember texting my brother, Jonathan, breaking and breaking down to the point of texting him about taking a semester off because of how hard it was for me to be at school while missing my dog truffles, my parents. And of course, this was all before I was diagnosed with NLD because I was diagnosed at the end of my sophomore year and at the beginning of my junior year. Um, so in between those two. So eventually I decided that because I was going through so many personal things, after some time I figured out how to get my dog certified as an emotional support animal, that is ESA for me, so I could have her with me. After that, I was able to have her with me for the last year and a half of college. This made it so much easier because then I could do better in my classes and not have as much stress in my life. Before Truffles was in ESA, I was going home once a month to visit my family. Afterwards, I was able to do it at most every other month, and I brought her with me. Once I had Truffles up there with me, my friends wanted to meet her because I had always talked about her to them, but they had never met her. I'm so glad I got her certified as an ESA. That was one of the best choices I've made in my life. Please let me know via email or on the Facebook or Instagram page for this podcast if any of you need help or assistance on knowing how to do this for yourself or someone you love. It's actually pretty easy to do to get an animal certified as the most support for you. It's not as hard as it may seem. 
So I also try to hang out with my friends as much as I possibly could to make things easier. Um, this is what I did uh, while also having troubles with me and also before. Um, this gave me practice to get better at all the social things that were challenging for me since I have NLD. In addition to hanging out with my friends, I got together with my older brother who lived nearby the college I was attending. We would do fun things together on the weekends. He could also help me with my classes because he had gone to the same college as I was attending. Um, he, well, sorry, one thing I told myself as a motivator to keep doing well at UC Berkeley is that there was a reason that they accepted me. And I have reminded myself that I have one of the few, I was one of the few that got the chance to attend the number one university in the country. This helped when I got discouraged and wasn't sure why I was accepted because often it was very challenging for me to do well and succeed in my classes, even with the accommodations I had. Like I've said before, I felt like a four year marathon. And if any of you have NLD, I'm sure you understand why. I share these things with you because I want to show you that I have overcome, well, not overcome my challenges. I've made my life easier with the challenges. Some of these challenges still exist for me today. So it's not like they just disappear. Um, so like I said, I've made my life easier with these challenges because I've worked so hard at them. And I also want to encourage you to do the same so that you can experience it, so that if you experience any of the same challenges that I do, that you can make your life easier. And I would like to share with you that there were many times when I didn't believe I was going to graduate college, especially in my last year or last two years of college, actually. And I remember my mom saying to me, sweetie, do you believe that I believe you're going to graduate? I said to her, yes. And she said, okay, remember that when you don't believe that you're going to graduate. And that was very motivating for me because there were times when I didn't believe that I was going to graduate. And, ah, uh, wow, okay. <laughs> I got goosebumps just saying that to myself. Um, obviously that still has effect on me. Um, and um, I also remember, you know, looking out on the view of the um, fire trails when I would run and I, this was after I had troubles with me and I would look out there and be like, okay, there is a reason I was accepted here. Like I was saying earlier in the episode and, um, just remind myself of how far I came and not to give up and to keep going. So I hope that you guys got something out of this episode. So whether it's getting ready for a big change or transitioning life, going off to college, or trying to keep yourself motivated to keep doing your best. I and others who have NLD or NVLD, same thing, still have difficulty in these areas today. And as I wrap up, I'd like to share with you that I've recently created a website, Facebook and Instagram account for my podcast. The name of the website is livingwithnld.com and I would love to hear from you my audience what you encounter when you went off to college what was the most difficult thing if you're listening on Spotify or somewhere else please shoot me an email at livingwithnld at gmail.com or if you're listening on livingwithnld.com please leave a comment below the episode it's set up as a blog so you can do that and here's an app that you may find helpful for you 
if you're still in school. The Khan Academy can help you get better at different types of math, including statistics, algebra, calculus, and geometry. It can also help you study for the SATs and ACTs. And I remember using it when I was in school and I found it very helpful for math, especially helping you just run through multiplication tables, which were tricky for me to memorize. So thank you for listening today and I hope you enjoyed learning some new things today. Talk to you next Friday. Bye. As I wrap up, there are some things I would like to share with you. I do have a website for this podcast. It is called livingwithnld.com. I also have a Facebook and Instagram page for this podcast. It is called Living with NLD. I will include the links for those in the description. In conclusion, I would like to hear from my audience. If you know individuals with NLD that I could interview for this podcast, please email me at livingwithnld at gmail.com. What are you interested in learning about NLD? I know I'm not an expert, but I do know I have the living experience of having it. I would like you to practice journaling about your gifts and differences. Also see if there is a way that you can make that difference become easier for you to do than it originally was. Thank you for listening today, and please go to my YouTube channel and subscribe to it. Thank you. Bye.